revelations.unveil.detroit. Hello, family. Hello. This is revelations.unveil.detroit. And once again, we are back together to converge at the knee of wisdom to get insight and clarity to wipe away the confusion of Babylon here on this continent of captivity here in America. And so family, we are back at the theme, protection for the connection or connection for the protection and family we've come across a story where we are examining this individual's position of authority the scope of their actions and the depth of the cover-up so family we have to understand we are in a trick bag we are dealing with two sets of rules and so just so we understand the inequities the discriminations that come that we come across the 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 the, the, the barriers the things that so-called trip us up from those who tell us to pull up our bootstraps and keep it moving. Well, family, we're gonna find out the extent to which those pr who protect their own. So I'm gonna start out with just a little bit of a clip so we can begin our ride down this rabbit hole of sexual assault. Let's see. Raping children for decades. Sarah Rose admitting today to raping children for decades. Some of them taking the stand and delivering victim impact statements that were disturbing. And now Rose will spend at least the next 10 years behind bars. Victim number four was between eight and 10 years old when the defendant repeatedly sexually assaulted the child. Prosecutors outlining the horrific details of what Patrick Rose did to six victims over the course of 30 years. The former Boston police officer and president of the Patrolmen's Association raped children as young as six years old repeatedly until 2020 when he was arrested. Some of these victims described being sexually assaulted upwards of 200 times. Rose accepted a plea deal today. He'll serve between 10 and 13 years in prison with 10 years probation. The prosecutor reading a statement on behalf of one of the victims. This sentence is not what I wanted. I wanted you behind bars until the day you die. Rose then addressing the courtroom himself. I am so very sorry to each and every one of you. Please try and accept that I am solely responsible. Rose was suspended from BPD in 1995 on allegations of child abuse, but was never charged. Internal affairs documents released by interim mayor Kim Janey alleged leaders of the police department neglected their duty to protect and serve. Our office will always zealously and fully prosecute sexual assault cases, regardless of who the offender is. Now, the current president of the Boston Police Patrolmen's Association re uh, releasing a statement which reads, in part, we hope today's decision will bring with it a small level of comfort, closure, and vindication for the victims and their families. We're live at Suffolk Superior, Superior Court in Boston. I'm Peter Iliopoulos, WCBB News Center. All right, family. So that was the report outlining the happenings of Patrick Rose Sr., who has the complexion for the protection. So family, yes, he was caught and he was sentenced, but it's much deeper than that. This man was the former 
Boston Police Department head of the union. So let's get a little bit more information, family. In Boston, Massachusetts, a former Boston Police Department officer who later went on to become head of the police union had pled guilty to several charges of child rape. Patrick Rose Sr., 67. So family, this is a older gentleman, a police officer and head of the police union was originally charged with 33 counts in connection with rape and abuse of at least six children in the 1990s. Some of the charges included statutory rape and indecent assault and battery on a child. So we have this police officer, an officer of the state who is abusing his authority against children or minors since the 1990s and family. He was just sentenced this year. So we're talking in excess of almost 30 years. Some of these victims describe being sexually assaulted upwards of 200 times. Uh, Rose's victims were sometimes six, seven, or eight years old, prosecutors said. And he raped the six victims in his West Roxbury home over the course of 30 years. Family, how was this allowed to continue? By virtue of his position, he had the trust and he violated it over and over. He violated their bodies and these children and these adult survivors will live with that trauma for the rest of their lives. All right, family. So he was sentenced to 10 to 13 years in prison, followed by 10 years of probation. So that is where his privilege was invoked for his complexion for the protection 10 to 13 years for the abuse of children over the course of 30 years. He doesn't even get 30 years the time of his pedophile predatory practices. So family, when we look at the scope of the legal system that we are all so-called under, we do see that there are two Americas. Rose joined the Boston Police Department in 1994 and spent most of his career working in Dorchester. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry about that, family. In December 2014, the Boston Police Patrolman Association voted in Rose as the union's president at their annual elections. So these officers had the trust in this individual to make them the head of their union. Let's see. Now, there was a report on some suspected activity against this officer way back in the 90s family. So these charges are not new by any means. Along with releasing 14 redacted pages of documents, redacted meaning they were blacked out, information scratched out for public consumption, related to the mid 1990s internal affairs investigations, then Mayor Kim Janey issued a statement that called the department's handling of the situation deeply 
unsettling. Based on a review of the former officer Rose's internal affairs file conducted by the city's law departments, it is clear that previous leaders of the police department neglected their duty to protect and serve, she wrote. So there's the blue wall of protection that goes with the complexion for the protection that lets these pedophile, predatory police act lawlessly with minimal repercussion when they are found with maximum impact on victims. Former Police Commissioner Paul F. Evans and former Superintendent Anne Marie Doherty argued the documents published by City Hall present an incomplete and unfair version of events. Hmm. We are disappointed that the only facts presented in the City of Boston Corporation Council's memo were the facts that supported the press release issued by City Hall and not the Boston Police Department's complete efforts in this matter, they wrote. What could their efforts have been, family, other than to fire and imprison this pedophile police officer back in the 1990s when the charges presented themselves before he went on to establish a career and become head of their union. So now when we talk in terms of respect of authority, when they tell us to comply with the police, we are left in a situation of critical analysis. It is a life and death arrangement. Will we survive? Will we be molested, mutilated, manhandled here in America on this continent of confusion and captivity. We are told we should abide by the laws of the land and the arbiters of the peace of those laws. And here we have an example of the most egregious activity and abuse. In addition to the treatment the discrimination, the detainment of those of us, of the chosen. So family, the trick bag and treachery of the American legal and justice system, continuing vigilance to illustrate the disparities. We shall reconvene, reconverge, enter our chamber of critical analysis and wisdom so that we will continue, continue to remove the bricks of the foundation of Babylon. So, and until we are together again, I love you. I love you. I love you to be continued revelations.unveil.detroit